What's up? We're talking about drop two voicings and dominant seventh voicings, and we're going to talk about it in the key of E today and a bunch of uh, inversions of said. <clears throat> so let's get into it. Hey, there it is. So we just did this, so I'm just going to review this a little bit. There's a little E7, A7, just the one, four, and the five, E7. I'm all about the ping pong cadence today. The one, the four, the one, the five, the one. So here we had all dominant seven types, like you would hear in blues, like two, three, four, one. just do that the next inversion up so these are drop twos meaning that if they were in close position if you could play them such a way on guitar don't hurt yourself but you could play them like that we're taking the second voice down or this from the top and dropping it down an octave is how they name these things it's from um, this is like big band jazz nomenclature so if I take this seventh chord all within one octave I'm taking that second from the top and I'm dropping it down and up down an octave actually you know what <clears throat> this is a good way to do this so people that you know what people are talking about or what you're talking about if you're talking about a drop two is that this is the second voice from the top and you just take that voice and you drop it down one octave and you get a drop too. So this B is no longer up here. With their, all of the voices within one octave, you've spread the voicing a little bit or given it a distri different distribution of the voices. So <clears throat> that's what we're doing with all of these. These are all drop twos. So there was your E7, A7, E7, B7, A7, E7. And we can go up to the next inversion. First I had the root as the lowest note. Now here is my third in the bass as the lowest note of this E7. Now to an A7, it's going to make the uh, the seventh the lowest note of that A7. Up back up to that E7, B7, A7, E7. Can kind of see this as like a C7 shape or maybe it's helpful to see that this is a B7 type shape in open position um, you can think about it as kind of like C form in the cage sequence is helpful to think about that and then this one is like an E form shape as is this one so E7 B7 A7 E7 Next inversion up, here we had that third of that E7 chord, so now fifth of that E7 chord. E7, A7, E7, B7, A7, E7. One more inversion. Now the seventh in the bass, the D natural. And then third in the base of the A7, back to the E7, third in the base, again that kind of B7 or C7 shape, if you will, of that B7, A7, A7. B7, A7, 
E7, A7, E7, A7, back up to E7, D7, A7, E7, and down, E7, 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 A7, B7, A7. Good enough. Now, the fun thing that may help you actually learn these shapes all the way up and down is we, we know we got two open, e, two open E strings, so you can take any of these voices of these drop twos that you've made and drop that low high E string down to the low E string. What we end up with here is a drop three voicing because I'm taking, if you want to talk strictly about the voicing, that would be the notes in order. And we're dropping that first note, second note, third note, hence we call it a drop three. Let me show you that on the keyboard again. So, uh, let's see, I have to start with this reposition. Like that and instead of dropping the second note I'm dropping that third note down like so okay so <clears throat> drop three that's what we end up with when we take this drop two voicing and drop the top voice down two octaves it's just an easy guitar nomenclature guitar grip way to look at it a7 right e7 so this is E7 with the third in the bass, A7 with the seventh in the bass, E7 with the third in the bass, B7, seventh in the bass. Notice that, that the thirds and the sevenths are always changing places, as will roots and fifths. I'm going to look at that in a second, too. This one was this, oh, we said C7 or B7 shape, but now we're moving the highest note up to the lowest string. A7, E7, B7, sort of an E shape. A, a, uh, e shape. I think that is a C shape, C form cadence wise, or E7 shape. And then, uh, but it's E7. Finally, the seventh in the bass. the third in the base of that A7, back to my A7, and then third in the base of this B7 chord, third in the base of the A7 chord, seventh in the base of the E7 chord, E7, A7, E7, A7, back to E7, B7, these are nice for if you don't have a bass player. I'm sorry. A7. And you want to create some movement in the bass. E7. I'm using the fancy thumb over trick because I'm so far up the neck. And I don't feel like straining my shoulder, but I could bar it that way too. Notice I'm finger picking so as to save myself the trouble of actually picking out these strings with the pick. E7, A7, E7, B7, A7, E7. Move those through the blues form and see what they're, what they're like um, and how they relate just as they are. It's really good to look at the voice leading as close, moving as stepwise as possible between that's why I was moving the way that I am in these little groups. Going down for the subdominant or the A, back up to the tonic, and then up for the dominant and back. Arpeggiating them is really nice because then you start picking out the... Hearing the, 
the voices as they move between the chords. <laughs> do one other i'm going to move those drop twos onto the middle four strings so let me do that i guess we'll still do it in um in e as well so e7 again middle four strings you can see here so this is a drop two again with that we took a close position seventh chord and dropped the top voice from second voice from the top down an octave so this B, this E7 right here is the same distribution as this one here on the, on the top four strings that we did just a minute ago. Oops, sorry about that. So it's fifth root, third, seventh, third root, fifth. And then we got garden variety, uh, A7 chord, open position. E7 with the fifth in the bass. And then, oh, look. B7. Oh, we lose one voice in this one. Oh, wait, let's see. Yeah, let's do it that way. B7. A7. A7. So I'll run through that blue style. B7. A7. Just take this E7 and we move it up one, one inversion. So everybody's going to go up one voice in the chord. This is a funky one. People oftentimes miss this one. It has the seventh in the bass of her E7 right here. So I've got my middle finger at the fifth fret of the A there, and my fourth finger at the sixth, uh, sixth fret of the D, my index finger at the uh, fourth fret of the G. And my first finger, or sorry, my ring finger with the fifth fret. Seventh, third, fifth root. All right? Oh. And now we have a first inversion of this A7 chord with the third, third, seventh, root, and fifth. So we went between this one, back to our A7, E7. And then, same voicing as that A7, but two frets higher for our B7, A7, E7, E7, A7, E7. Likewise, now we've got the root back in the base of that E7 chord, E7, A7. A7, E7. Notice how when I'm alternating these groups of chords, if I just go between the 1, 4, and the 5, on the A string, say, it toggles between having the root of the E chord in the lowest note or the fifth of the A chord. So the fifth of that A7 chord and then the root of that E7 chord. So it's going to toggle back and forth between the, the root and the fifth, the root and the fifth, no matter. Or if we go up to the next one, the third, and then there's that funky ace, that funky seventh voicing again. A7. So we go back and forth between having the third as the lowest note in the chord to the seventh. funky one I was talking about a little bit it makes it's a little form more familiar instead of on the middle four strings as it is on the top four string if you hear those same notes G C sharp E A G C sharp E A it's a little form more familiar in this grip than it is for most people moving to this grip
so forth. And why I was talking about this, the sevenths alternating with the thirds and the fifths with the roots is a good thing to do with this after kind of familiarizing yourself with the voicings and a good way and, uh, to extend that familiarization is just play through the circle of the circle of fifths descending. So sure, let's start on B7 and then go to E7 and then go from E7 down a fifth to A7 and from A7 down a fifth to D7 and then from D7 down a fifth to G7 and from G7 down a fifth to C7. And you notice the grips just alternate. You've got fifth in the bass, root in the bass, fifth in the bass, root in the bass, fifth in the bass, root in the bass. Keep going, F7, B flat seven. So the fifth and the root alternate. Fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth, root. Fifth, root. That's one cycle that you hear in going around the circle of fifths. And then if you change it, and let's see, we'll start on this. Here's this B7, this funky voicing we've been talking about this whole time. You put the seventh in the bass, way up here at the 12th, uh, 11th, and 13th frets. Well, that's going to alternate with this third in the bass. And then seventh in the bass, third in the bass, seventh in the bass, third in the bass, uh, seventh in the bass, third in the bass, seventh in the bass, third in the bass, and on and on and on. Where was I? B7, E7. A7, D7, G7, C7, F7, B flat seven, and on and on. That's what I was talking about, the, the way those alternate. And that's how those 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 chords voice lead. Just just like so. Let's see where are we are. E7 or B7. Sorry. B7. E7. A7. D7. G7. Doing those, actually moving the chords in that way is really good and useful because lots of things move around the circle of fifths in Western harmony. So there's a good way to kind of get yourself a bunch of seventh chord voicings, learn the inversions. It's good to, you know, if I go back to these E7, just practice the grips moving around like that, inverting the chords. The top four on the middle four B7 and also these drop threes. So a little, a few different ways to explore those. One in kind of a blues form, moving around one way on the circle of fifths and back to the middle and then to the five, four to the one. And then um, also going through them, uh, through the different inversions and distributions. And then also just moving straight up through the circle of fifths so you can see how it moves when you move up and down a fifth. And you can just play with those. Um, I have a little doc, a PDF here. If you if you ask kindly for it, maybe I'll post some JPEGs of it on the Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Okay, go practice. Be nice to your mother. Bye.